building to our on my right is the blacksmiths and um, well believed to be the blacksmiths workshop and um, it's one of the number of workshops that's um, situated at the mine it's the only one that now survives but because the location of the mine is so located right up here so far away from Laxey the mine had to be very sufficient in carrying out repairs on a day-to-day -day basis and that was the function of buildings like this and the rejoiner shop and the blacksmith shop and various other workshops as well to so make the mine basically self-functioning in, in the locality. This workshop with blacksmiths would be carrying out repairs to the metal work and um, anything from presumably the, the tools that the miners used underground to be um, working them sharp and repairing basic things like spade, shovels, picks and stuff like that to more um, more elaborate work, perhaps to repairs to machinery that had, that had failed. Um, the crushing machinery, for example, on the washing floors um, said it had to be very self-contained because the location is so um, remote from everywhere else. We're standing now at the top of the engine shaft, so this is the very place on the 10th of May 1897 where they first realised that the disaster had happened. The shaft goes down to a depth of about a thousand um, feet deep and from there the lower levels go for about three quarters of a mile underneath Snaefell Mountain. It's now full of water and luckily it's been um, capped with a big concrete lid to stop people falling in or trying to get into the mine because it is quite dangerous. Um, but Standing here now, to me, it's just so it's just surprising, difficult to sort of really appreciate what must have gone on here 125 years ago. It is so quiet and peaceful. Yet here, it must have been a chaos on a really in tune when all the miners suddenly started appearing out of here shortly after 6 a.m. on the 10th of May, and they realised that a disaster had happened. Well, the mine could work almost entirely by water power and um, had a very large water wheel which of course now has been re-erected in Laxey um, but in the summer months um, uh, in particular the water supply would um, diminish um, and there would be difficulty operating the machinery so there's a number of steam engines at the mine that were used during the summer drought and the large chimney behind us here um, was put, erected in about 1891 when there was a large steam engine built here to to operate the pumps and the winding machinery and various other pieces of machinery when, when the, water, the mine ran out of water. So the piece of stonework behind us here is the, is the sole remaining piece of the large water wheel that was at the mine, which was used for pumping water out of the mine and also winding the, the kibbles of ore um, from underground to the surface. It was built in 1865 by a company called Howells in um, North Wales and it was 50 feet diameter so it was a very large water wheel and in fact um, when the mine closed it was dismantled, taken away to Cornwall and then reappeared in the Isle of Man in the early 2000s by, and was re-erected at Laxey at the Valley Gardens by the um, Laxey Mines Research Group. You can still see it down there turning to this day on the Valley Gardens. This is one of the two or three tributaries of the main Laxey River that flow down from the sort of lower foothills of Snaefell Mountain itself. And the mine um, area at Snaefell here, the sides of the valley are very steep and very compact, and it was very difficult to lay out an area, a flat surface area to work on. So the mining company um, covered over the river and built the land up to build level areas further up behind us so they could mount the machinery and the water wheels, and, and, uh, et cetera, and the other buildings. But the river, of course, was still there, so they had to arch over the river, um, and it, it still, to this day, flows beneath the mine ruins. You can see behind us there the water flowing out through the tunnel mouth. And as the mine expanded in the 1880s, 1890s, they, they extended the length of the river tunnel and covered over more land, and so it's still there today, still flowing out right beneath the remains of the mine. The building is um, behind us known as a turbine house, which was built in 1885 and contained a, a water turbine which powers compressors, which was used to compress air for the miners' drills underground. And, and when the mining underground, a lot of it is sheer hard work where they had to um, drill lots of holes by hand to be filled with gunpowder, which they then used to blast away um, and the rock and get to the mineral in the lead ores. The turbine house and the compressors um, and the, then the compressed air drills enabled the miners to drill the holes underground a lot easier and quicker so it speeded up the mining process um, 
they, they could drive levels and extract minerals much more quickly using compressed air drills than by hand. And all around us here now as well is um, the, the very fine um, stonework, is the dead remains of the dead that have been crushed in the 1950s and just tipped here and now partly submerges the building. In the 1950s, the Snaefell mine was reworked by a company called Metallifers Holdings Limited, and a gentleman called Doug Bannock, who was an amateur geologist, and he came up here and realised there was sufficient lead ore and zinc ore still in the deads that had been dumped here that he could rework. And he formed a company called Metallifers Holdings Limited and um, reworked the deads heap through the 1950s. And in doing so, unfortunately, a lot of the original buildings from the mine were destroyed at that time and replaced with, with more modern 1950s type structures. One that survived was the building behind us, which is formerly the lead store, which was built in 1891 when um, they mine the, the lead and then bag it and um, store it safely in here before they carted it down to Laxey. But if you look inside it there now, there's, um, the original uh, building was used by um, Doug Bannock and there's um, mountings in there for engines for his machinery, so it's like a combination of the 1891 building and 1950s reworking. On the other side behind me there, there's, a, there's other, other structures that date from 1950, like this large holding tank and storage area. The, the process that Doug Bannock and Metalifers Holding used was called the flotation process, which involved creating large tanks full of water and chemicals um, and large ball bearings that they tipped the, the dead uh, into, it crushed it finally and then the ore, the lead ore came out and the, the um, machinery behind us was mounted in on the beds and there you can still see it see in there now which um, had large engines and um, other types of equipment in there to, to work the flotation procedure. Um, but they used, from what I can gather, quite nasty chemicals so quite what effect that had on the Laxey River at the time, um, possibly not a subject to be mentioned. This is a, a piece of, um, of rail. There's a number of um, tramways at the mine that they used to push um, wagons of ore and deads around the site. So this, uh, this piece has obviously survived. It's called um, a bridge rail by the, due to its cross-sectional shape. And when the mines closed here and at Laxey, um, a lot of the rails were used as fence posts. Um, so they'd be driven into the ground and then fences attached to them. So I guess that's what, what this has been used for at some point as a second function. Standing outside what was Captain Cooley's house, it was a quite an impressive house built by the mining company. Him as mine captain, and so it's here. It was where he lived with his family. It was last occupied in the 1940s by the Parsons family, who were shepherds living up here. And I was told a little bit of the story by the um, descendants that, that one winter they were actually trapped in here for two weeks because the snow was that deep. Um, Shepherd had to climb out the back windows of the house to go off and to tend his flock um, and the rest of the family were um, trapped inside because the, the, the snow was that deep up the front of the house they couldn't actually get out through the front door. If you look, at, if you look to the, the right of the building at the back there's a nice little outhouse which I believe is the outside toilet and I thought of using that on a, a winter's night up here in the pitch black and the cold. Um, it was quite an interesting experience. This building is known as the powder house where it was stored gunpowder and latterly dynamite um, which was used in the mining process so underground when the miners were working the ground they drill holes into the rock and um, fill it with powder and light it and then there'd be an explosion all the, the rock and ore then be um, like, collapsed on the ground and they were able to bar it out of the mine. They needed somewhere obviously very secure to store this and um, the gunpowder and later the dynamite and that was the function of these, this building here. Um, it's very interesting because it has an inner storage area surrounded by an outer wall. Um, the one nearest us has collapsed slightly, but it doesn't enable you to see in, into the building. And the reason for that was um, in case that there was a, an explosion, it was not only security, but also there was an explosion, the um, explosion would be directed upwards by the double walls, so a security and sort of safety thing as well. So, so you can see very nicely the construction of it here behind us and um, the, the double skim. This is probably one of the most conspicuous features of the Snaefell mine today, particularly if you're travelling up on the Snaefell Mountain Railway tram as you go up towards the bungalow and it's a laid 
um, which is used to take water to the big water wheel at the mine. The Snaefell mine could work almost entirely on water power, but in the summer months, um, water power was limited. So this served sort of two functions, not only to get the water to the wheel, but also used as a reservoir. As you can see, it's quite big and wide and still holds water to this day. And the, the miners dug it along the foothills of the mountain and linked the two ri rivers or two or three tributaries of the Laxey River together so they could get as much water and save as much water to drive the water wheel. So every summer um, they, they had a, an annual sort of task force that came out and enlarged it uh, um, and dug it a little bit deeper and made sure it was clean so they could store as maximum water as possible and then they could use the water to drive the water wheel and all the machinery at the mine.